Good morning and assalamu alaikum my dears hope you all are doing well so welcome to yet another wonderful session of 805 signatures expressing the self so today we'll be starting with a new chapter this chapter comes in the second module of your text I hope you remember what the second module was it was speeches and testimonials now this chapter is the draft of a very famous speech this speech was not actually given in a real life situation it comes in a scene in a movie but still it has great significance it is actually the speech that comes in the climax of the famous movie or the very popular hollywood movie the great dictator and the famous personality here of course our own very favorite charlie chaplin so i hope this session is going to be very fruitful for you so let's start Charlie Chaplin right an amazing man who made us laugh an amazing what can we say a persona that exuded so much comedy an individual who inspired so many people now what do we know about Charlie Chaplin He was born in the year 1889 and died in the year 1977. His full name Sir Charles Spencer Chaplin. He is a famous English comic actor, filmmaker and composer, especially in the era of silent film. He has a very remarkable career that spanned more than 75 years. His famous screen persona was the tramp. I hope you all are familiar with the tramp. In most of the movies we see him as the tramp that is a very, you know, a person who has no job, you know, who's always, you know, very baggy dressed and that kind of a persona. So that was his most famous screen persona. This is repeated in many of his movies, the tramp. The same character reappears in all his movies. One of the very uh, notable things about Chaplin was he was such a multi-talented, a multi-faceted personality or uh, a very talented person. He wrote, directed, produced, edited and starred in almost all his movies. He even composed the music for most of them. Very famous of his movies would be The Gold Rush, City Lights, modern times very hilarious the kid and of course the movie we are going to study the great dictator we don't have to say that he has won innumerable awards and honors from many uh, lifetime achievement awards and general uh, general honorary awards he has also won uh, you know the academy awards many many awards and for the film that we are speaking of the great dictator he has won the best actor uh the f- uh, uh, the award the academy award for the best original screenplay the best picture all these awards have been won by the great dictator so as i told you earlier the great dictator an amazing movie that uh, was uh, you know that was released in the year 1940 so the year is very significant it was the year when the world war 2 had you know only relatively begun you now it's had not been full fledged and all but you know it was during a time 1940 you know it was you know in its starting phase now The movie came out at a time when the Nazis the fa- the uh, Nazism and fascism were at its peak 
you know they were you know prosecuting jews you know all kinds of things had you know just started in a small scale at the time 1940 so the movie was very timely it was released at a time when it was very significant you know of course i forgot to tell you about some fun facts about uh, charlie chaplin uh, one you know very favorite instant that i remember from charlie chaplin's uh, bio was that uh, it was during the time when he was a very famous very popular celebrity he was known around the world and all so it was during this time uh, the, in a fair in a very popular fair they had conducted this charlie chaplin look alike contest you know you have this look alike contest where people come dressed up as that individual and the best person to imitate and to look the part of the individual will be given the award so it was a look alike contest uh, you know we always see such contests everywhere so this was a charlie chaplin look alike contest so he was passing by and he saw this you know big board and all saying charlie chaplin look alike contest participate to win million dollars and all so he thought it would be fun right now to watch it so he went there so when he went there obviously he looked like charlie chaplin because he was charlie chaplin so the people there they thought he had come to register so they asked okay tell us your real name and uh, you can register your name here so just for the fun of it you know being the person he was he gave his name and you know gave all the details and that is how uh, he got registered in this uh, look alike contest and he participated in the contest as one of the participants okay now the most uh, shocking part was when the results came charlie chaplin actually lost the contest he did not win another person actually won the charlie chaplin charlie chaplin look alike contest so imagine you know uh the real charlie chaplin loses in the charlie chaplin look alike contest that was you know very uh, remarkable in that sense okay now moving on to the movie the dictator uh it's a very you know exciting movie it was very as i told you it was very timely it was released in the year 197 1940 it's a time when you know people had you know actually this uh, world war 2 had started and people were being divided in the name of uh, caste and uh, race and all people were starting to have this kind of complexes in their mind you know some people were feeling inferior some were feeling superior so that kind of you know thing was going on so it was during this time the movie the dictator came and uh, you know it is said this a uh, final speech in the movie which uh, supposedly the dictator is giving so it actually is very important in the sense uh, it gave out a message to humanity warning them about the uh, you know about what would happen if this war m- moved forward and how people should stick together how the citizens should be one Of course in the movie they have used all kinds of you know fake names and all the dictator is called Hinkle uh, Charlie Chaplin's character plays uh, the double role he is both the dictator that is Hinkle and also a Jewish barber who is prosecuted or who is being oppressed Okay I'll give you a small you know a, a kind of a synopsis about the movie uh, The Great Dictator it's a 1940 American political satire satire means you know it has uh, you know all these factors of making you know criticizing some concept so it was a political satire it was a comedy drama movie it was actually Chaplin's first film with dialogue you know one important thing to note about Charlie Chaplin was that he had started in the era of silent movies and then when uh, sound was incorporated and the era of uh, sound movie sound films came out even then charlie chaplin felt that expressions were best you know uh, to portray our emotions so he did not move to sound so even though sound movies were coming out he still kept on producing what can we say he still kept on producing uh this kind of uh comic uh silent movies 
and the great dictator was his first sound movie that he decided to uh, produce and direct and it was released only in the year 1940 and uh, charlie chaplin plays the role of a jewish barber you know a jewish barber who is living in the slums in the ghetto it was a slum area that was occupied by the jewish and there they were prosecuted and they were uh, being oppressed and all by the dictator of the country that is the name of the country is tomania and hinkel was the name of the what can we say the dictator now the dictator hinkel he was uh, you know uh, what can we say um, oppressing the jews and all kinds of things so a few uh, before the start of you know actually all this uh, problems uh, charlie chaplin who played the role of the jewish barber he had actually uh, taken part as a soldier in the first world war that was 20 years back and uh, as a part of that uh, during the war he lost his memory he got amnesia and he was admitted in the hospital he could not get his memory back and he was hospitalized for a very long time and after 20 years he comes back you know and he still has not been uh, his memory has still not been revived so he sits uh, and he starts to you know make a living for himself so he has this identity he is this jewish barber he falls in love with a neighborhood you know a simple girl called hanna and then he is living his life it is during this time that is 20 years after he's lost his memory so it's around the time of the second world war and that is the time the dictator hinkel starts oppressing the jews and all kinds of problems take place and anyway somewhere around the um, middle of the movie we find that uh, charlie chaplin who is the jewish barber and his friend who is a very you know who was a commander or something in the military but who was, was you know put in the concentration camp so the jewish barber chaplin and this uh, commander also uh, who was his friend Uh, they are both in the concentration camp and then they escape from the concentration camp actually when they escape they put on these uniforms of the nazis a uh, nazi in the sense the dictator the rulers of tomania so the military people so they put on the military uniform and they escaped so when they escaped he was putting this uniform and he had this striking similarity to the dictator hinkel now hinkel as the dictator on the other hand he was being very arrogant he was occupying many countries he was you know oppressing jews doing all this you know what can we say this kind of atrocities around the world and hinkel was do, was going duck hunting and he was wearing civilian clothes civilian clothes meaning common dress that is a shirt and a pant so he was wearing his common dress and he was duck hunting uh and the real jewish barber he was actually he had put on the uniform of the you know military so he was like representing he was looking like hinkel and hinkel was wearing the civilian clothes so the police was uh, or the military were uh, trying to find this escaped convicts that is the jewish barber chaplin and his uh, friend so they thought that hinkel wearing his civilian clothes he was the uh, Jewish barber who had escaped from the concentration camp and he was put he was captured by the military on the other hand the chaplain who was playing the Jewish barber he was wearing the uniform so he was thought to be uh, the dictator and it was uh, at a ceremony or something like that and he was forced to speak so he had no other option if he told that he was not the dictator and he was actually the person he was then they would capture him and put him in prison so his friend told him to keep silent and make use of this opportunity so he goes on the stage and he delivers this speech it is then that he delivers the speech so he knew that he was being mistaken as hinkel so he started delivering this uh, address or he started addressing the nation and he tells them that i have changed my mind i have become a good man i don't want to be a prosecutor i don't want to be an oppressor and how he is giving a message to the people 
so this uh, so it is said that charlie chaplin he himself wrote the movie he himself acted directed uh, and produced the movie so it is said that charlie chaplin he actually wrote and edited the what can we say this uh, final speech because he knew that it was very important in the movie so he had edited it so many times so it is it gives an excellent road map of of how the people should you know address issues like this uh, racism and all and how a good leader should be okay and in his autobiography chaplin is saying that uh, you don't have to be a jew to be an anti nazi all you have to be is a normal decent human being Uh, so chaplin actually man- spent many months drafting and rewriting the speech as i told you because he thought it was he knew it was very important it was actually a call for peace and it was actually spoken by the barber who has been mistaken for hinkel hinkel that that is the dictator it is actually representing hitler now uh, many people had criticized the movie many ha- people had you know criticized the speech and it was very you know out of place in the movie but many have uh, found that it was very uplifting so even today you find that um, uh, chaplin's speech is very relevant okay so that is all i have to tell you about the movie uh the great dictator uh, i think you can watch you know snippets or uh, scenes from the movie in the youtube channel uh, in youtube uh, so it would be very uh, good if you could you know watch uh, some scenes and get a fairly good idea about the movie because it's very uh, significant in a sense it was an address of peace it was an invocation to the people to stand together it was uh, a message to all the leaders around the world how selfless they should be and how sh- they should view the world so in many concepts it has a very beautiful message to convey to the people it has a very beautiful message to give us so i hope you all will watch uh, Uh, try to watch at least some scenes from the movie the great dictator just type down the great dictator 1940 charlie chaplin you get you know the movie uh okay so thank you girls so i think i will end today's session here and in the next class i'll be telling you more about the you know the context when the movie uh, when the speech is delivered and about you know the important points that are spoken of in the speech So thank you all for your time and patience and keep smiling girls. Good morning and assalamu alaikum.